Next up on the program, Mike Holmes, Vice President of Research and Development at the Lignite Energy Council, going to talk about three R&D projects uh, approved at the Lignite Research Council uh, meeting last week. If we ever went back and looked at uh, the investments put forward by the Research Council and then the uh, fruits of that labor, it would be pretty astonishing, really, when you talk about uh, the progress that has been made. It's one of the things that gets lost, uh, I think, in uh, the whole debate over the climate issue is the amount of investment that is going into cleaner coal, for instance, and the technologies available to make them. And a lot of that has come uh, over the years from the uh, uh, Lignite Research Council. So a good partnership uh, there. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the latest on that. Mike Holmes joins us to do that. Hi, Mike. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me on. You bet. So uh, give me the highlights on these um, on these partnerships and the R&D and, uh, and what's happening. First of all, let's just talk about a little bit of the history because uh, uh, there has been a, a state industry partnership in R&D uh, for a lot of years, going back uh, to the 80s, how many dollars uh, have been, uh, you know, leveraged, and w- what is the outcome from all that? Um, yeah, thanks. I'd like to continue with that topic. The the average is typically, um, it, it's based on how much coal is mined per year, and there's about 30 million tons typically on average mined each year. And so it's around, from that pot, then we end up with about $3 million per year to put to the research and development related to coal. And as you mentioned, Scott, it's just been a tremendous success. That technology development continues to to drive the uh, improvements and address the challenges facing the industry. And, uh, you know, some of the curves out there over time, since uh, about the time the program started, um, the uh, Clean Air Act was uh, put in place, and we've seen about, um, in some pollutants, as much as a 90% reduction. And that's um, at the same time as power production has gone up by more than two and a half times what it was back in the 70s. And the gross domestic product has gone up about three and a half times what it was. So it's tremendous success with the technology improvements. $60 million in state dollars leveraged uh, hundreds of million dollars in industry and uh, DOE dollars, Department of Energy dollars. So you've got hundreds of projects that have, uh, you know, over that time period really improved the industry, as, uh, as Mike had pointed out. So I also understand this is, uh, this is sort of a one-of-a-kind, right? This isn't a typical in, in, other, um, in other coal states. Are we unique? Yeah, we're, we're quite unique now, especially the uh... – the program keeps going strong and providing uh, many fruits, and so it, it's really a great um, program. And what makes it also very strong is the engagement of industry with technology developers and uh, researchers at um, the ERC, NDSU, and others. And so it's a, a very successful program, partly because of that engagement. And, and North Dakota can take a lot of pride in, in how unique it is. All right, so we have some news here related to some new projects that um, are part of this program that have come on. I wanted to have you uh, give us some highlights on, uh, you know, each of these and talk a little bit about, uh, I, I know there's a strict evaluation project and you've got experts that are looking at them and evaluating them. And so it's, a, it, it's not a slam dunk. They really put these uh, projects through the paces. So uh, we, we talked not long ago about rare earth elements, and I was fascinated to learn uh, about the potential that could be there, but uh, what's the what's the what is specifically going to be research related to uh, rare earth elements? So on that one, you uh, had um, the team on your um, radio show not that long ago, and they were wrapping up phase one of that program, and it, in, encouraging results from phase one show the potential to um, be a good economically viable option, um, so that they're looking at. Uh, the extraction of rare earth elements from North Dakota coal-related feedstocks, and they're looking at a phase two, and it flows right in with what you were saying, Scott, where we really can leverage some of this state investment. In that project, the total project cost, as they move into phase two of a U.S. Department of Energy program, they're looking at just under $3.5 million dollars, and the state investment for that would be $280,000. So a really good leveraging of the state money. And so they'll continue down the path of what was done before and scale it up to uh, tens of kilograms per hour 
and look at um, their technology that showed the most success in the smaller scale testing to get a high performance, economically viable, and uh, environmentally strong technology to recover these rare earth elements from lignite-related uh, coals and feedstocks. And then, of course, the rare earth elements, most of which are imported from China, um, in fact, essentially all of them are imported into the U.S., are critical for our electronics, our um, chemical industry, medical uses. So it's, it's an important thing, not just because of the economics, be but because of uh, security reasons that we have our own source of these. Fascinating. Three and a half million dollar project and uh, a lot of promise there. So that one's going to be fun to watch uh, for sure. Let's talk about uh, a couple of these others including um, one that actually ties to agriculture, where uh, you have a, a research project going on uh, to, re to uh, do resource recovery from a coal-fired plant uh, to enhance agriculture production. What's that all about? Yeah, so that one is a team led by North American Coal, and it includes Great River Energy and the EERC and NDSU and uh, NOR Farms. And they're looking at um, when you make the electricity out of a coal-fired power plant, um, you have some uh, low-temperature heat available, and you have the CO2 that we're looking at different ways of capturing and using it. Of course, we have the big opportunity in the state of enhanced oil recovery, but this is an option of combining that CO2 with that uh, low-temperature heat, and uh, they're, they're going to evaluate uh, greenhouse applications for extending the growing season, growing different crops locally um, that can give us a new value proposition related to coal in the state and tie in energy and agriculture into, into one opportunity. Yeah. The other thing they're also looking at is open field farm applications for um, using some of that CO2 as well to enhance the crop production. So that one's, that one's really neat because we're looking at a way of um, combining the two, ag and energy, and enhancing agriculture even further through the, uh, you know, dependable, low-cost energy that we have available in the state. I love that. Whenever you can pair up energy and ag, that's fantastic, and the possibilities there are great. Last one that was approved is, the, uh, is one on carbon capture and something called the VCCS cycle. What is that, Mike? Yeah, so that one is uh, also a phase two project. They did uh, some smaller scale testing, and now we're looking at um, scaling that up, and that's with Expansion Energy, Great River Energy, North American Coal, and, uh, and uh, what they're looking at there is instead of the more traditional solvents, they are um, looking at a different type of solvents that can make a mineral out of the CO2 capture. In fact, uh, one of the main minerals will be limestone, which then they can turn around and use in their process for capture of sulfur and things like that. So with this then, as we scale this one up and go into the phase two, then this is one of, um, we're up to eight projects in the portfolio of the Industrial Commission's lignite research program that are related to carbon capture and carbon utilization and storage. Interesting. This is great. And again, these all a, a partnership. This is a, you mentioned this one's phase two, so that means obviously it's sort of the initial investment. One through we've got we've got something. More funding takes it to the next level too. So you're 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 baby stepping these uh, to make sure there's some promise there with those dollars, right? Yep, that's right. And again, as you mentioned earlier, Scott, this, these all go through the um, review process and then through the Lignite Research Council where they play an advisory role and, and make sure that we're all good stewards with the funding. Love it. Love it. All right. Anything else you want to tell us, Mike, before we let you go? I really appreciate the opportunity to be on. It's just such a strong state program. It's, it's been so beneficial, and it continues to be. So thank you for your uh, support and letting us get this information out there. I appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing the story because, uh, you know, number one, there's some tax dollars involved here, and you want to know about that, how those dollars are being matched up when the, uh, you know, um, you have the, uh, uh, the uh, Industrial Commission involved. 
and uh, and deciding that. But also at the same time, it's an important industry to the state in the future, and it's nice to know these things are happening. It's one of those quiet little things that makes make make a, make a lot of sense, and uh, small investment pays big dip, dividends later on. So it's it's good to know about it and know what's happening. So appreciate the update, Mike. Thanks a lot. Anytime. Thank you very much. Mike Holmes, Vice President of Research and Development at uh, the Lignite uh, Energy Council, our guest on Energy Matters. 